Jordan Cadams Tech here. In today's video, I wanted to tell you all what you need in order to become a junior developer today. Um, this video is going to give you a quick rundown and tell you everything you need in order to do this. But first, if you're new to my channel, please remember to like and subscribe. Share this with a friend or family member that you know is interested in development. Um, it'll really help push my videos out to a wider audience and I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys. You want to do backend? Focus on just what I'm telling you right now for backend. And if you want to do full stack, which is what I do, focus on what I said in the previous and what I'm about to say. Now we're moving to the backend. Backend, you can use several different programs. You, you have a lot of programming languages to choose from and a lot of different frameworks to choose from. Um, you can do this. You can learn, since you already know JavaScript, if you did the front end or if you're starting from scratch, JavaScript is a safe bet. Node has been around forever. So learn JavaScript and then learn the Node platform, which is what you can write JavaScript within, right? Um, then you could use others. You could use Python, Django. You could use c -sharp .net. You can use Ruby and Rails. You can use PHP and Laravel. Um, don't get overwhelmed. This is a huge tip. Don't get overwhelmed which one to choose. I would say this, whatever area you live in, Google around, like Indeed, whatever, and say backend developer jobs or full stack jobs, or you could say software engineer jobs. Look at what's popping up in your area the most. In my area, there's a lot of C-sharp.net and Node jobs around here. Um, different areas have different, I guess, preferences for what the stacks are. Um, but most areas, um, you can work remote these days, so it doesn't really matter a whole lot. But look around your area, see what, what's popping up the most. And if it's something that interests you, go for that. All right, so I would recommend, honestly, I would recommend probably as a good first to jump into JavaScript and Node, just because it's so, so, so popular and it hasn't really changed a whole lot. I've been using it for seven years now and it hasn't changed a whole lot. So I think it's, very, it's pretty stable. And uh, if you don't like it after a while, you can jump into something else, but at least build a couple projects with this. So that way, um, you have something to show for it, right? So JavaScript node or other programming language, these concepts all trans translate over. Learn some type of request library. I think you can use something like Axios um, with node. Uh, that this, is, this will allow you to accept requests from the front end, accept payloads from the front end, do something with it. I mean, you can't really have much of a back end if you don't learn this. Um, learn about databases. So you want to learn about uh, either MySQL or Postgres or MongoDB, which is no SQL, which means not only SQL. So you can use SQL and, and use the other way of going about it, right? But safely, I would say learn SQL, learn, learn some SQL, learn how to um, grab something from a database table, learn how to update a field in a database table, learn how to read uh, a field from a database table. Um, and there's a certain paradigm in most programming languages called MVC, stands for Model View Controller. And uh, the model is what will model the data. So say you have a, say you have a car, right? You can have a model named car. And then inside of the car model, you can have color. And then you can put what the color is. You could have make, you could put what the make is. You could have um, model, inside of the model, get it, model, and then have like camera, right? Um, and different things like that, different properties on that model. So it literally models what the data will be. And that will map to the cars table. The cars table will have several fields, make, model, color, etc. So you can grab it from the table. You have the program, uh, programming language modeled. So it's like, you know, uh, car.make, car.model, car.color. And then that'll print out the different um, values for the properties, um, etc. So don't, don't get overwhelmed, take it slow. You don't have to be a genius to get this stuff. Trust, I'm not a genius. You don't have to be a genius to get this stuff, okay? 
um, just take your time with it and make sure that you understand what's going on. Those are, those, that's what's absolutely fundamental and huge with this, right? Take your time, learn it thoroughly, and try and understand what's going on. Give you a different angle here. Give you a different angle. So, you got your SQL, you got your database, you got your backend language, you got your backend framework, I mean, that's what you need to be a backend dev. Learn, learn those things. There's other things that you can learn too. You can get deeper with it. I mean, the sky's the limit with this stuff. But as far as getting a job, those are those are some of that's basically the core concepts that you need to learn, right? Um, uh, oh, I didn't even talk about. It. So I said model view controller. So the controller is. Let me, let me explain the whole flow of the program real quick. So model view controller, right? So say you're on the front end, you submit that input um, for ordering pizza. That data, so it's like first name, last name, address, etc., goes somewhere. Well, where it goes is the server, right? It'll hit the server. So imagine the data is flying right in, flying right in there, right? So it flies right in. And where is it flying into? It's flying into the controller, right? It's flying, well, it's actually, it's flying into the route, right? So you can say slash submit pizza, right? Boom, hits that pizza route, right? And this is a route. It's just a little area where it'll be like slash get pizza, right? Inside of this route, you will have, you're able to hook into the controller, right? And the controller is essentially an area where you can manipulate the data. You can validate the data. Say, hey, did the user fill out this correctly, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can say, hey, let me take their first name and their last name. Let me put it together as a as just name. Let me um, do this thing and do that thing, right? And then let me, let me also hook into the model, which is what models the data to the database. Let me hook into that model within the controller too. So let me validate, let me hook into the model. Everything looks good here. Let me go ahead and call this model and insert the data into the database. Bam. So that is the controller. And the model is what I said earlier. The view is the UI. That is where the user is submitting the form, right? Boom. So now you know the difference between model view controller. Took me a while to grasp that concept. And honestly, I don't expect you to grasp the concept from what I just said. Um, I can see this being highly confusing if you don't understand or haven't touched much code before. Um, but I just want to give you a rough overview of that so you kind of have some familiarity with it so that way it's not completely foreign to you. All right, so you know your backend stuff, right? If you wanna be just a backend dev, I would also say it's, it's, it's good to have something visual though during the interview process. So if you're just a backend dev, I don't know how you would go with about displaying what you know just as a backend dev to an employer um, outside of actually building something that they can see, right? So if you're gonna be a backend dev, I would say, just from my own opinion, maybe build something simple on the front end so that way you could, um, so that way you can like show them what your backend is doing. So maybe build like a simple page, just a really, really bare bones simple page. Um, so that way you can show them like what happens when you submit the form and what you do with that. Or actually you can do this better yet. I don't know if it's better, but you could do this if you don't want to touch the front end. Have all of your backend set up. So you have your routes, you have your models, you have your database stuff, and you could use something called Postman. And there's alternatives too. There's other things you can use too. Um, you can use Swagger, I think, too, another one. But Postman, you can hit different API endpoints, right? Which are basically your URLs, the routes that you've created. Um, you can do like slash pizza, right? And you could actually put in some data, some little fields, and press the button and then show what it's doing. You could show that it got a good response. You could show, open up your database and show that it was inserted correctly. You can do things like that. So I think that'll be a good alternative if you're just trying to stay in the back end way. Now, if you're doing full stack, do what I said during this entire video, basically, but do it um, in a way where you don't go super in depth with, with all the stuff, unless you have time, unless you say, I have plenty of time before I get my first job and I wanna get deep with this, I wanna become really good at this, then 
go ahead, take your time. Whatever interests you, whatever th these topics interest you the most, focus more on, right? Otherwise, at least know some of these so that we can put all the pieces together and connect the puzzle, right? Um, go to meetups, uh, join some Slack groups, join some discords, talk to people in your area, um, form some connections, um, and try and put your name out there. And uh, this will be huge, right? Um, also try and build something for, for freelance. Try and, try and build something for a friend or family member that might be useful. Um, so that we have something to show to during the interview process. And you could say, hey, I actually built this thing for someone. They love saying that. And then you could also add it to your resume that you did freelance work, right? Because if you don't do freelance work, then you can't really put that you did freelance work, right? So that's, that's part of it. You can learn simultaneously while you're, uh, while you're doing freelance work. And then it'll help, not only it will help you advance your learning, it'll help you maybe make a little bit of money. You don't have to charge much when you first start it off. It'll help you add resume experience, which will help you get your foot in the door. So it'll help multiple things doing this. You don't need to be an expert at any one of these things. You just need basic knowledge. You just need to be able to do some of it, have some sort of proficiency, enough to get into the door as a junior developer, right? I know, I know you guys can do it for sure. I believe in you guys. I know you can do it. So do it. Um, if you have any sort of interest in this, please don't give up and keep trying for me and for yourself and for your family. Please try. Don't give up because that would, that would pain me if, if you're really interested in this and you give up. Um, it's not that long of a road to get your first dev job. I, you can, you can get in. You can do it. Um, if this video was helpful to you, please share it with a friend, family member, or anyone you know that's interested in development. Give it a like, give it a subscribe. Um, it'll help push this video out to a wider audience. It'll be super helpful to me. It'll be helpful to others too, um, more importantly. Um, it'll be helpful to others. And that's part of me trying to give back to the community is making these videos. Uh, I haven't made a single penny from any of my YouTube videos. So that's it, um, Cadabs Tech here. I will be posting more videos very soon and I hope to see you guys soon. Leave any comments that you have down below, be really helpful and see you guys next time.